how to value yourself and putting a price tag on it. Um, there's elements in here which which are um, a little bit strange for me to be presenting because I, I am not very good at administration and bureaucracy. Um, <laughs> and um, at one at one time, I had uh, quite a reputation with the Council of Europe. Uh, I would get calls or even emails uh, from time to time saying, uh, you did a piece of work for us nine months ago. Maybe you should send us uh, an invoice. Um, so eventually I was actually pushing myself to uh, to get better at this. And I was so proud one day because I'd finished the project, sent the invoice in, everything's exactly on time. And I got an email the next day that said, this is fantastic, Nick. It's the first time you got everything to us on time. But can you sign it and send it again tomorrow? <laughs> Um, so yeah, it's um, very typical of me. Or another example would be um, I was chasing a payment from the youth partnership for for several months last year, and and then uh, they finally told me that they'd actually paid me three months before. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm not the best person at this. In in I have a lot of information up here, but uh, the action is is not quite the same. Just to to be straight about that from the beginning. Um, <laughs> And so, yes, uh, we're going to be um, exploring three main topics um, uh, this evening. Um, self-branding, self-recognition and self-management. Um, for, for me, one of the biggest difficulties faced by many people who, who work in professions that can be considered as a vocation. Um, vocation meaning we, we're in a prof profession where we have a desire to support and help others. Um, the downside of this is that many people in these professions and youth work trainers uh, particularly uh, often experience poor financial conditions or situations. Um, we take on too much work. Um, many of us have a lack of business sense, uh, primarily me. Um, we're not very good at valuing ourselves. Um, and uh, either in terms of... of um, financial worth or in terms of, of uh, competence worth. Um, and we give a lot of time and energy to other people um, at often great sacrifice to ourselves. And and yeah, to be fair, we're not all experiencing all of these things at the same time. Uh, many of us is, is, is one thing at a time. Um, so yeah, let, let's go into self-branding. Um, and uh, I found this quote, which I quite like. Um, it's it what it's about what makes us unique and memorable. Um, many of us are not very good at, at as, as I said, at uh, self promotion, uh, and some don't even consider it as a necessity. I, I get work, I do work, um, everything's okay. Um, and yet, we I think it is something that we need to be far more aware of. Um, and we should be promoting ourselves in the in the work that we do. Now there needs to be a balance here. Uh, I produce a lot of materials over the years, um, which means I'm doing a lot of research, um, particularly in, in the area of training of trainers. Um, so I've pulled information together. I've then put it together in, in a more what I consider to be a more understandable format, um, and, and created basically handouts, even theories. And I put my name on it. And I remember being heavily criticized in one training course because virtually everything that we were using had my name on it, had my logo on it. And uh, one of the participants was was very upset that I should do this because they considered this was just me using a training course as a promotional platform rather than an educational platform. Um, so I think there is a danger of going too far or at least of people not understanding uh, what it is and why that uh, my name should be on those things. That it, my name is on those things because I created those things. Um, and, and this is very much about recognition, recognition of, of uh, the skills and um, the knowledge, the competence, the values, the uh, all, all those elements that I've built up over the years um, that, that has a worth and I need to show that. Um, and in terms of branding, well, um, if you go to uh, Marisha's um, video, if you get a chance to, to see that when it, when it is published online, she, she goes into more detail about this. Um, but it is worth coming up with something. It is worth uh, brand having a brand for yourself about uh, uh, colors, about font, about logo, about imagery, 
um, developing something that will work across different medias. It's something I've been learning about actually as we've been doing this holistic trainer project because we created this whole um, brand around this. And there's no reason that we can't do that as individual trainers um, in, in promoting what we're doing and the, and the skill base that we that we come with. Um, so there's, there's different elements in here. Um, yeah, it's a little bit repeating now, but if you produce something, put your name on it. If you created it, put your name on it. If somebody else created it and you're copying it, put their name on it. Uh, I think it's hugely important. Uh, so many training courses I've attended as a participant or been on as a, as a co-trainer, and the trainers or colleagues are simply putting uh, projecting things onto the wall or putting information onto a flip chart, which are theories, theories that somebody has worked on and spent a lot of the education getting to the point that they can create this theory. Uh, it needs to be respected. If we don't respect other people's work, why should our work be respected? And I think this is something that we need to improve on in general, is that we need to be saying, this came from this person. Um, this theory came from me. This theory came from that person. Um, so I'm, this is something I'm very passionate about. Um, I've got some of my work out there, which is published by big institutions, which doesn't have my name on it. And despite the fact that I've asked numerous times, uh, I am not getting credit for that. Um, so this this can be something that's, which is a little bit frustrating. Um, get get a logo. Um, you know, my my company, I, I set up a, a youth work company and it's called Odd Socks. A uh, very long and stupid story as to why it's called Odd Socks, but it is. Um, but I use that I use that brand um, and I use that logo, and that logo goes everywhere. It goes on everything. Um, so you know, if if you're working on a training course for an organization and there's an info pack, can your logo go into the info pack? Because uh, they will put your name there. Why can't your logo be there as well? So I, I think these are also things that we need to, we can be thinking about. Um, use it uh, in your email. Um, every email I send has my logo on it um, at the bottom as a signature. So when, when I do a reply email, it doesn't appear, but I make sure I click another button and, and I put the, um, the signature logo in. So, um, you know, this is something we can also be doing to support ourselves. Utilizing social media, uh, it's not something I'm very strong at at the moment, something I'm, I'm getting back to being more aware of, um, especially with developments in LinkedIn, for example. Um, Facebook is less relevant for, for younger people, but in terms of many of the employers um, of youth work trainers, Facebook is still quite relevant. Um, so, you know, advertise, when you're doing a training course, put it on Facebook, put it into LinkedIn, let people know what you're doing. Um, this is creating visibility. And it, it's uh, quite a bad habit that I've got into in the last few years is I just stopped doing Facebook because it was becoming less relevant. So I was never saying, oh, I'm, I'm on this training course this week or I'm on this conference uh, that week. Um, I, I, you know, we need to be visible. Um, it's not just about making applications. It's about people knowing who you are in order to get work. Uh, and that does make a difference. We are actually as big as Europe feels sometimes, we are actually a very small sector, um, either as youth workers, trainers, um, I'm seeing Slager there, so re researchers as well, um, you know, and, and we can much more easily than other sectors and other businesses, we can build a name for ourselves. You've got to back that up with, with your skills and your competence, um, but, uh, you know, if you have that skill and that competence, make sure that people know you have it. If you, if you don't have a website, consider getting a website. Um, it's a good way of actually uh, of, of having your CV permanently on display because you can actually uh, put on different pages information about the things that you have done and, um, and keep up to date with that. And you can start getting a following on that as well. Again, linking with social media, with things like especially LinkedIn. Um, and, then, and then products. You know... Um, I remember years, many, many years ago now, um, York Lice, uh created, and, and I think with Anita De Silva at the time, um, and maybe a couple of other people, I can't remember the whole team or how much of a team it was at that stage, but they created uh, a game called Plan B. Um, and this was 
12 years ago or, or 13 years ago this thing was created um it's still uh being used on training courses today uh around europe and there is still a specific training course that it's being used on uh, i forget the name of it now but um so you know they created a product they put their name to it um and and uh if you for many people if you talk about plan b they'll know Ah yes, you mean your class and you Marmelado village in in uh, in Portugal. People make that connection. Um, so if you create something, I created uh, many years ago um, the art of co-working or the art of non-co-working, as it later became called. Um, you can find this in many publications, and it's got my name attached to it. I created it. It's 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 my my work. Um, so. We are creating things all the time as trainers. Much of it is only relevant for the particular training course that we're doing, but some of the things actually have a much bigger value. What are they? Can you actually do something with them? Is there a way to um, to find some way of getting it published somewhere? And if it goes in, um, my co-working thing was published first in Coyote in 2012. Um, it's it's now in T Kits. It's in um, I saw Marco earlier, if he's still here, it's, I think it's also in the publication that his organization from Croatia uh, produced. Um, so, you know, if you have something of value and it's not about, you know, waving a banner and saying, hey, look at me. It's like, no, this, this is something that people find really, really useful. Don't, don't then go and bury it in your garden. Get it out there. Let, make sure people know about it. Find ways to get it published. Um, um, okay, let's um, move into uh, self reckoning I forgot to say, sorry, uh, this is a conversation I had with Patrick before we started, was to encourage people if there's questions to put them in the chat. Um, and Petra will um, acknowledge those and, and save them up and then interrupt me at some point uh, because I can't see the chat from, from my views. I've got so many things on my screens here. Um, so I'm going to move on if that's okay, unless anybody has anything they want to uh, respond to so far. No question. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, price is what you pay, value is what you get. Um, and I, I think as, as trainers, we come with a huge amount of value. Um, and uh, oh, I didn't want to go there yet. Hang on. <laughs> um, and and the self recognition here really is is very much is going to be very much focused on money, um, and and how we value ourselves financially, which is a very realistic part of our work. Um, many of the projects that we're we're a part of, uh, if they're with a Salto or with a national agency, um, uh, with a locally based youth organisation that, that has uh, funding for a key action one mobility or even a key action two. Um, there are set amounts of money. I think Salto at the moment is 330 euros a day. The Council of Europe is around 300 euros a day. The uh, Youth Partnership is anything up to 350, I think, um, a day. Um, if it's if it's a youth organisation, I, I know some of the youth networks, um, they only take volunteers to do their training courses. Others will offer 75 euros a day. Uh, some will offer 200 euros a day. It's much, much less um for youth organizations simply because the 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 fee for a trainer is not included in, in the funding package uh with erasmus plus or the council of europe i think um so it's it's worth thinking about the money side of things um and not just because because oh, sorry um because there are some slight changes taking place yes these are the flat rates that exist but if you're in a key action two project or there are some ways of getting employed now with national agencies or saltos where they require you to keep timesheets so that 330 euros a day doesn't apply anymore uh they're now asking you to keep a track of of what it is that you are um what what you are doing and then you get a certain amount of money per hour or whatever it is in in the contract so th this is something that I came up with recently, which is uh, as, as I was thinking about this and researching about, um, you know, value and, and worth. We often think it takes us five minutes to write an email and physically maybe it is five minutes. Um, but is it really five minutes? And I would I would challenge to say it's really not five minutes. 
it may be physically five minutes of, of finger fingertips on a keyboard, but um, you are a trainer with, with experience. Yeah. It's about your imagination, your creativity, your problem solving skills, your diplomacy, your knowledge, your experience, your values, principles, everything that you stand for goes into that email. And uh, if it's an email which is responding to um, um, a situation in a in a in a project, or you're um, just generally communicating in a project, a training course, or, or whatever it is, you are using your brain to actually prepare that email. So in reality, you can really be thinking about thirty minutes worth of time for that five minute email. Um, and that, that's that's really what we're trying to get to in, in terms of um, talking about this bit. Because um, the, there are so many different aspects to what we do. So administration is, is one of those elements. Um, what paperwork are you responsible for the pro in, within the project? Um, what communication are you responsible for within the project? Uh, how much time is it taking you to respond to the emails? In reality, keeping in mind, it's not five minutes. Um, so um, if you're responding to, let's say, um, uh, 20, 20 plus emails a month for one particular project, well, that's 20 times, uh, for example, 30 minutes. Not all of them will be 30 minutes. Sometimes it'll be longer, sometimes it'll be shorter, but uh, I'm just using that as an average at the moment. If you really consider that, 20 times 30 minutes. Um, suddenly I'm lost on the math now. For, but uh, let's, let's consider that that's a day's work a month. Yeah. Just responding to emails and messages. Uh, that's a day of work that you have earned. So that needs to go down as, as, as earnings. It can't be ignored. You're thinking, oh, it, it's nothing. It was just a, a few emails. No, if you really sit down and think about it, uh, most projects that we're involved in, if, if the longer term projects for sure, maybe some of the, the, the singular training courses, less so, but the longer term projects, um, there's a lot of emailing going on, a lot of messaging going, WhatsApp now as well. Um, this is taking your time and your energy uh, and your skill base. Um, so don't, don't ignore that. Um, also think about how much are you having to communicate with an accountant, for example, so someone outside of the project but it accounts for this project. That's also work time. Um, so, you know, don't, don't ignore these things. Um, thinking about uh, value and worth in, in training courses. Um, you know, I think this, the standard is for, for Salto at least, or Salto's and I think most of the national agencies, if it's a five-day training course, uh, you get paid for 10 days. If it's um, if it's a repeat course, so it's, it's something that's happening uh, multiple times, then that calculation changes. I think it's a half day plus a full day. Um, um, traveling, we don't get uh, our travel considered to be work. But uh, what time did you get up in the morning? What time did you actually um, uh, get to the hotel or conference center or, or hostel wherever you're staying that later that day? Um, Maybe you're traveling 14, 16 hours um, and doing a few hours work on the computer in, in between times if you have the energy. Um, you know, we don't get paid for this yet, but it is a day of, of work or it's a day when you can't be doing work, uh, but it's a day of work for that project. So, you know, maybe that's something to be considering for the future. Um, And um, we were just having a, a just talking with Petra earlier about writing because I'm I'm going more into that now and and writing is is uh, is not where you're going to earn money. <laughs> um, it's it's a lot of a lot of hours um, and and not a huge amount of money, um, but it's it's a very interesting area to go into. Um, so you know, it's also what do I charge if I'm if I'm doing writing work um, if if I am allowed to actually set a fee um, and things that you need to be thinking about is you know, how many hours or days, weeks, months, is it going to take you to complete this piece of work? Is it an article, a publication, one and a half pages, uh, uh, 500 pages? Um, 
you know, um, I'm on one writing thing at the minute. I get 40, 40 euros an hour uh, plus 45 euros for a page. Um, and generally I'm, I'm producing one and a half page to two page articles. Um, and those articles can take me um, six to eight hours. Um, no, more than that. Sorry. So, yeah, anywhere between, it depends on, on the article, but anywhere between six and 12 hours. I'm allowed to go 12 hours max. Uh, this is because I'm conducting interviews. I then have to transcribe the interviews. Uh, I've got to type uh, and then actually write the article. And then I'm sending the email to the person I interviewed with with the, tra with, um, the first draft, getting it back, making changes, second draft, so on, checking it then with the agency I'm working for. Do they also approve it, making changes, going back? You know, so the actual writing is maybe um, uh, six hours. But then I've got uh, four hours of, of administration work. So that gets charged because that's part of writing the article. Um, you know what? So be thinking about what is the scope of the project I'm being asked to write about? How complicated is it? Um, there was a horrendous um, advertisement for a rapporteur for a conference that came out uh, in September or October last year. I know it was for September this year um, for a, a conference. And it offered um, the rapporteur three days salary. The conference is two days, and then you're expected to complete a, a two-day conference report in one day. And, and um, it's, it's, it's a disgrace. It's not good enough. Um, the, the time it takes, the rapporteur's work really starts the moment the conference finishes. And the rapporteur will still be working a month at least after the conference is finished and, and when most people have forgotten about it. Um, it's a huge, huge amount of work. Um, uh, editing work. Um, there's there's three elements here. One is being an actual editor. One is something called copy editing, which is uh, is less familiar, uh, and then proofreading, which which I think is quite familiar for most people. So editor basically is someone who uh, goes through and 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 is is advising where whether things should be moved or cut out or, or developed further. Um, not necessarily actually contributing themselves, but um, uh, contributing their expertise. Uh, a copy editor is someone who goes in, looks at, goes through the publication, um, and then is is making changes within the talk. So I, I also I do a lot of copy editing. So I will change, rewrite complete paragraphs, usually sentences, because uh, majority of people who write are using English as their second or third language. Um, so you know sometimes things things need to be mixed around um, to, to be more understandable. Um, uh, and then proofreading is, is really looking for, for the grammar and, and, and that side of things. And the, I think the proofreader is probably the hardest job because um, you need a level of, of understanding of the language to, to be able to do that, which I don't have. I can tell you if something is right or wrong. I couldn't tell you why it's right or wrong. Um, but um, but again, think about what what it is that you're going to be doing as an editor. Um, according to Editor Ninja, this is one website which you can uh, you can discover. There's another one called Smart Blogger. Um, I'll put these in in the chat in a minute. Um, they talk about um, you know hourly rates and and such. Um, and it's it's not easy. It's 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 hard work, and and the pay is not great. It's forty to fifty euros an hour. But you're only uh, and and um, commercially they're talking about three to five pages an hour, um, you know. So it it's it doesn't add up in the end um, as as a huge amount of income, um, and it also depends on the speed that you can go at. Um, you know, some publications I can get through ten pages a day. On other publications, I'm stuck at three pages a day as a copy editor because it's so complicated and, and it needs and, and the person has obviously got a really good idea, but they've been unable to actually put it in a, in a way that is understandable. So I can spend the whole day trying to understand line by line what it is that they're wanting to say and then making that happen. So uh, it's very difficult to give a set rate for things like uh, copy editing and writing because you fluctuate so much. Um, I missed something here, uh, which was... Um, 
no, I, I didn't get a, a fixed fee for, for writing. But generally, you're going to be writing. For example, if you're writing, you're, you're going to be looking at four to eight pages a day, most of us. Um, not much more than that. And if you're researching, probably it's going to be even less uh, because you're spending a lot of time reading stuff and then writing a paragraph and then having to read some more and so on. Um, yeah, co copy editing. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, according to the experts, they say three to five pages an hour. Um, it takes me three to three to ten pages a day, <laughs> like I say, depending on what it is. So it's it's difficult to to put actual numbers on this, but it's really thinking about how much time is it actually taking me. And this, this is kind of the mantra of of this uh, session today is um, how much time. Um, if we go on to uh, to projects. Um, we, I'm going to skip through some of this because we talked about emails and messages already. Um, you know, they are part of your work. Measure how much time they're taking you. Uh, online meetings is another one to think about. You have a quick 30 minute meeting or you have a one hour meeting. Again, it's not one hour, uh, it's, it's more of your time and your energy. Um, and, and it's really important to take this into account. Um, leading up to um, a meeting, even if I'm not leading the meeting, just participating in a meeting, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about it half an hour before it starts. Um, I'm tidying away elements on my computer so I can be ready for the meeting or maybe reading through uh, uh, the agenda. Um, I go through the meeting. I then need time to, uh, what did I call it here? I need time to decompress. Um, not so much for the short meetings, uh, but I can't finish a meeting and then go straight into another piece of work, especially if it's been a two hour meeting, hour and a half or two hour or two and a half hour meeting. I've got to get up and I've got to step away from the computer. I need to refresh my brain uh, and my eyes. Um, I need to move and I, I need to get this out of my head. Uh, or I need to stay at the computer and then finish making some notes or um, check some links that were that were mentioned. Um, you know, th there's there's a load of things that you need to be doing there. If you're in a if, if you're in a two hour meeting in the, in uh, in a morning, that's probably the whole of your morning. That's half of your day. That's a half a work day um, is is done with that two hour meeting because of what you need to do before and what you need to do after. So value yourself um, and take that into consideration. Yes, it was two hours, but what do I actually charge for? Um, I need to be charging three hours or I need to be charging a half day or four hours uh, for, the, for that two, two and a half hour meeting. Um, something I was involved in one project was was uh, doing a lot with social media. It was called Focus, Focus Learning. Um, some of you may have come across it. Um, we were posting things every once a week or once every two weeks um, on multiple social media and then multiple sites within Facebook, for example. Again, it's not a five minute job. It feels like it's a five minute job because you just click a button, copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, return, 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 all done. It's not. You've got to actually write the text. You've got to, and even the action of, of uploading it um, onto uh, nine or 10 Facebook groups that still takes time. Um, so don't don't dismiss these jobs as something I just do and, and they're gone. They, they take time, they take your time, they take your expertise. Um, conferences and symposia. Uh, I was asked to do a conference last year. Um, I think we were offered four days salary for it. Um, and we, uh, with a colleague, we sat down and we actually calculated about 12 days. Uh, and in the end, we got 10 because we, we negotiated. Um, but th this is a huge amount of work, which sometimes I think the, uh, the big institutions don't fully take into account how much time. Um, you normally, if it's a big conference, you're going to have a preparation meeting. That's two days uh, preparation, one or two day preparation meeting, plus your two days of travel. So it's physical preparation meeting you're going to be having anything up to 10 one and a half hour online meetings between that physical preparation meeting and the conference happening itself. Um, and again, that one and a half hours is not one and a half hours. Maybe that's two and a half hours in reality for you. Um, 
you're also going to be having side meetings. So if you're a facilitator or you're the rapporteur or, or uh, one of the f workshop facilitators, you need to be having other meetings on top of the core meetings. Um, if, if you're the main person, then you're going to be needing two to three days to develop the program. Um, you're going to be involved in identifying the workshop facilitators and, and, and the rapporteurs. You're going to be involved in selecting the workshops and select, selecting the topics for the workshops. Um, you've got the day of, uh, you've got the conference itself. Um, oh, and then, sorry, communication with panelists and guest speakers. That's also part of your responsibility as, as uh, one of the core facilitators. Um, then you're arriving a day, at least a day early. You're there for the two days at the conference. And is usually some kind of a half day follow up or something like that. So, you know, we are talking 10, 12, 15 days for a two day conference. And unfortunately, the employers see two days uh, conference. They don't see the, the no, it's not fair. Um, they, they work really hard. But I think when they're looking to employ us, they, they don't see the bigger picture uh, because for them, they're working an eight hour day as, as fully employed people. So it's part of their process. Uh, and I think we need to be pushing this, that whether we're working as, as facilitator, rapporteur, uh, or um, um, workshop facilitator, we need to be actually saying, yeah, I recognize that you're saying this, but the reality is actually going to be this. And there's no standard here. We can't say this is a, 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 what I've described as a standard. Every conference, symposia, whatever, is going to be different. Um, so that, that's worth taking into account. Um, Uh, yeah, I, I have made the mistake now a couple of times of, of uh, overpricing myself. Um, this is something it's, it's easy to do. Uh, I lost out on a nice piece of work at the beginning of this year um, because I, I, I stupidly quoted, a, a, it was a European network, but I, I'd had some work uh, previously with the Council of Europe for not the youth department, but another department. And I was kind of like, oh, that was a good fee. I'm going to ask for that fee again. And of course, I didn't get the piece of work because it was completely unrealistic for that organization. Um, so we, we need to be clear. I, I've always worked on a sliding scale. Um, and if I'm working for the institutions, then you get paid what, what they pay. Or if it's, like I say, now with, with uh, timesheets, then I'm making sure that I'm adding everything in. But if I'm working for a locally based youth organization, uh, which has its uh, mobility funding from Erasmus Plus or the European Youth Foundation, then I'm checking with them what what is their what is their budget, uh, what what have they been able to put aside. Um, there has to be a reality here. I live in in a relatively cheap part of Europe, um, but uh, if if you're based in Vienna, for example, or um, I don't know other, other big cities around Europe in in Western Europe. Um, you know, you're not going to be able to work for 100 euros a day fee. Um, so, you know, there are realities that need to be, we need to keep in mind, um, especially compared with uh, considering where we live and, and the expenses that we have uh, for living. Um, was there anything else I wanted to say on that? Um, yeah, look at look at what other people are asking as well. Ask around, um, you know, with, with things like the the guild and and uh, or if you're part of a network, who's charging what? Um, ask people. They, some people might be might be shy about sharing what what they're charging. Um, for some reason, we we have this mentality, at least in the UK, I think, of oh, you mustn't tell anybody what you earn. Um, I don't know whether it's a European thing or, or purely a British thing, but um, um, I, I don't think there's any reason we need to be shy about it or we need to hide it. Um, if this is what you're earning, this is what you're earning. I'm earning this because I've got to that point. You know, if somebody asks me and says, oh, yeah, I'm earning X amount, uh, maybe you should be asking slightly less because you've got less experience, whatever. Let's be real about it. Um, um, where did I want to go next? Um yeah, expenses. Um, this is something I I haven't thought about again as, as I was researching this. Um, do we take expenses into account when we are um, uh, putting in timesheets or, or when we are um, engaging in work? Um, I, I know this is probably tiny writing for you all, but um, you know these it's it's not particularly. Um, uh, 
it's not important everything that's there as such. It's just important to start thinking about the expenses that we experience. I think something that's not on here, for example, is is when you're traveling a lot, you're eating at airports. Who covers that expense? Um, a cup of coffee is going to cost you four or five euros in an airport. Um, I think in Dubrovnik at the moment, uh, a coffee and, a, and two croissants is 18 euros. Um, that was a breakfast I had recently. Um, you know, it's, it's insane. But um, uh, airports will charge whatever they want because you've got nowhere else to go unless you bring your own food, which we talked about last week in uh, Life on the Road. Um, but um, you've got national insurance or pension contributions, internet, phone. Um, do you rent an... Do you rent an office? Um, I've just recently had this um, revelation with my accountant. Uh, she's like, you know, but you work from home. Why Why aren't we renting you your room to yourself, your office to yourself? Um, so, yeah, something that I'm going to start doing very shortly is is uh, paying myself for working in my house um, or paying a rent to myself because I'm, I'm, I work from home. Um, you know, hosting a website um software uh, if, if you pay for uh, microsoft word or, or windows or whatever it's called um or other adobe or or if you're into graphics work who who paid for the um uh, for, for the packages the computer packages that you got the programs um did you pay for that and uh, did your company pay for that how how is that cost then reflected in in the work that you're doing then for the agencies and organizations that you're working for um stationary printing uh printing cartridges now what, 25 30 euros a cartridge and they they go like this um um if you're working from home again water electric ec eclectic e electric and heating sorry i see my spelling mistake um and and so on so there are there are lots of lots of different elements here which may not be practical to take into account uh, again, because many of us, when we are employed, we are getting a fixed fixed salary. But uh, it can be worth thinking about. Uh, yes, where where is this coming from? Uh, how am I paying for all these things? Because this is part of working life. Uh, I'm going to pause for a moment to take a, a glass of water because I've been speaking for a long time. Um, does anybody want to um, say anything or react to anything? I can share uh, the messages and insights from the chat. Uh, Christina shared her insight um, and she's sharing, uh, saying, if I can do a job for three hours, it's because I've spent 10 years mastering that skill. Oh, you don't need only for the three hours, but also for those 10 years of investment. Yes. So this quote is also um, kind of insight from Linda, comment that this is a thought I have sometimes. The money is not for those two, three, seven, whatever days. It is for all the previous years I have studied and worked to deliver these two, three, seven days of training. And the question is how to evaluate this? I have not found answer, but I have found some self-esteem in this thought. And the question from my side is actually too unique because I'm meeting many trainers, also those who are at the beginning uh, on their paths, and the self-evaluation, maybe you have some advices for those who are not afraid, but uh, they are not yet, <laughs> uh, not there yet uh, to say, okay, this is my work. Uh, I'm proud of myself. This is what I'm asking for uh, in sort of like the money. So what would you recommend or what, how you started to kind of evaluate or value yourself? I think it's probably easier to answer the the latter part of the question. Um, um, I, I have to confess, uh, it wasn't until um, uh, until the, the recent changes. Um, no, it's not true actually, because I said already that I, I charged a sliding scale. I always charge a sliding scale. Um, um, so actually, I, I didn't base it on my value. I based it on the value of the organisations I was working for, or at least not their value. Sorry. That, um, what I mean, and in terms of their monetary uh, value, uh, what they had to to offer, um, and and then as I got more and more into the copy editing work, um, I realised that uh, the amount of work that that was taking was was, was actually huge, um, and that was partly 
and and also the money got quite big because I, I think on two occasions I was offered a lot of money because something had to be done within two to three weeks, which is almost impossible to do when it's when it's 150 plus pages. Um, I think it was for the discrimination department for the Council of Europe. Um, so it was a memorandum that was going to the um, the all the all the governments of of the Council of Europe members member governments. So it had to be absolutely perfect. Um, and and I think it was like two thousand or two and a half thousand euros uh, for one hundred and fifty pages, um, which which was insane because I'd never seen money like that before for that kind of a job, and and that's well overpriced. Um, but uh, it had to be absolutely correct because it, it's an official uh, official governmental document, and that also meant checking every single citation um, and correcting it, and then finding the correct link when the link didn't work. And uh, in these memorandums, they are full. <laughs> Every other word, it seems, is, is a link, um, or in this particular one. Um, and so you, you, at the end, you feel like you've earned your money because you, you have spent uh, hours and hours and hours, days and days and days on, on this kind of thing. Um, um, and it, I, I think I'm not really answering your question. I think it's really difficult to, to find the value uh, because as, as you quoted from the beginning, yeah, it's not it's not the seven days, it's the 10 years that I put behind that. Um, I, I, I think with the, this advent of, of timesheets, it's becoming easier to, to value ourselves because it's like, yeah, actually, you know, this is the rate that they say is what a trainer is paid and, and these emails are taking me this much time. So I, I think this is this is going to start changing things for us and help us to put value on on our work um but other than that i think it's it you can only look at other professions for example um and, and then as, as a kind of contrary example is is that if you actually look up copy editing commercially it's much less than i would charge um because i don't think they do half the work that i do um i, I I really try to understand, you know, what, what they're talking about when I go to websites about copy editing, what they're talking about. I, I, I do something 10 times more than that. Um, so I, I, I think, yes, we can look at other professions, uh, look at teachers, social workers, pedagogues. Uh, what are they getting? Um, trainers in, in the business world. Well, I, I knew a woman a few years ago uh, who wouldn't work for less than £3,000 a day. Um, and she was working with some of the top CEOs in, in the, the top companies of Europe. Um, she turned down working for McLaren Formula One because they wouldn't offer enough, uh, or Mercedes, I forget which which one, one of these F1 teams. Um, um, so, you know, yeah, we, we can com try to compare ourselves, but but uh, the business sector, obviously, uh, there's, there's much more money going on there. Um, it's also argue, arguably, in many cases, much less quality um, from different things that I've heard. Um, I, I think I think we we can look outside. We can also look within uh, and see who. And that's why I say let's be open about what we're charging and and, and help people to understand um, what what the fees are, um, and let's have some transparency because it would actually help all of us. And if I'm charging, you know. Um, Someone who's just, if I'm charging a thousand euros for this, someone who's just starting out maybe needs to be thinking about four or five hundred. Um, and, and, you know, it's, and if, if they prove, prove their worth, then uh, the next time they need to be charging a thousand. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think there's no easy answer to that. I think there's, there's lots, lots of bits of answers. Um, none of which fully answers the question. Yeah, but also what I hear and also what you said is that the community and people you can actually ask for this kind of information is needed. And you should be around people who can give you this yeah. advice, info. So it's uh, good to be part of some something bigger. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I, I think um, it gives you that support to know what, what, is, what is a good um a good salary to be asking for uh, what is a practical salary so you don't price yourself out of the market like i did um and and keep things sensible and and not get greedy um uh 
which is easy to do. You know, you get a couple of big jobs that pay really super well. It's like, oh, okay, I'm going to ask everybody this. And it, no, it doesn't work like that, Nick. <laughs> Maybe just short uh, advertisement that we have guilt also here. <laughs> <laughs> you can check what they do. And if you're interested uh, also, check their website. There's yeah. a question connected. Um by charging a sliding scale, you mean that you tell them it's going to cost between this and that? And at the end, you tell them what's the final price depending on the hours you worked? Or you tell them it's going to cost between this and that, and then they choose the final amount they pay you? Uh, uh, the latter. Um, I had good relationship with, with many of the organizations that I've, I've worked with um, and uh, would often say, you know, this this is my minimum, this is you know what what the commercial rate or the, the big salto rates are um what what can you afford within that and then i i trusted them to to give me an honest an honest response but i think it can work both ways mm. Mm, another question what's the reason behind paying yourself a rent <laughs> um yes i i think i wasn't very clear about that apologies um I, I work from home, so I, I have a corner of my house which is dedicated to my work, which is where I'm sitting right now. Um, and um, basically, um, this is an office which my company is renting, um, or, or it's, a, it's a part of my house that my company is renting. Um, so um, what I'm going to start, I haven't actually got around to it yet. Um, my accountant went on holiday but uh we're going to start charging my my company um to to rent my house because in the winter it means i have the heating on all day um every day because i'm sitting in the house all day every day um in the summer i'm going to need the um the, the cooling down system working um so that's electricity which uh, i'm using but nobody's paying me for that uh for that usage um and and for you know the wear and tear on 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 the on the, the property and, and so on so um yeah you i think in the uk you can claim up you can charge uh you can well what's the word i think when i was in the uk uh i had one point one organization i worked with which was like a self-employed scenario that i could rent 25 percent of my house um to to the to the company um there's also a practical element behind it is that every time i take money out of my business account which is where all my fees get paid into um i get charged uh, tax so also if i charge myself rent i don't pay tax on that rent so it's a way of me getting money out of my business account and paying slightly less tax <clears throat> But uh, but it's a very practical practical scenario. If you're working from home, uh, you need a desk, you need a, a, a proper chair to sit on. Um, you've got to pay somebody's paying for the heat and light for that room or that space. Um, you know, if if you have a, an NGO that can afford it, or or I'm self employed, so it's my own business. Um, you know, it's I think it's very practical. Mm -hmm. So Lyman is sharing tip. If the project is longer, I try negotiating daily or hourly rate rather than fixed amount of days. And that uh, my following question also opener for self-managing topic. <laughs> How do you do it, Nick, with the yeah timesheets that uh, you are filling them daily, weekly, or how do you know when also the um, those who are um, yeah, employers, uh, when they are asking you how many days you need for that. Yeah, I am. Um, well, at the moment, with, with one project I have at the moment, um, uh, like I said, I, for, for writing these articles, I get 12 hours per article maximum. Um, so I, I know what the maximum is that I can charge. And then basically uh, I keep a spreadsheet. Um, and... Uh, uh, when I'm uh, working with that particular project, then I, I put down, okay, I sent an email on this day at this time, or actually not the time, but I, I say this day, 
uh, email messaging because it's not one email, probably it's several emails. So I'll, I'll put 30 minutes of, of uh, work down for that. Um, uh, and then when I'm um, uh, conducting the interview, uh, so preparation for the interview, um, doing the interview, post-interview stuff that I need to do. Okay, that's uh, two and a half hours. Put that into the spreadsheet. So I, I'm I'm going doing it as I go along for the holistic trainer project. We're a key action too. Um, so then I'm um, periodically um, doing it. And it, okay, we don't have a super large amount of money for this this particular project. So uh, I'm not being as strict as perhaps I would have with some other projects. Um, and so I'm doing weekly um, or even bi-weekly if I forget. And then you have to try and remember. Um, so I know at the be at the beginning of the year, we were going back over all the meetings that we had, um, uh, two or three of us, um, going through our different diaries and saying, yes, we had a meeting then, we had a meeting then, we had a meeting then, because we hadn't kept track of, of some elements. Um, but do it often. Uh, it makes life so much easier. <laughs> Yes, also Limonas is telling that there are plenty of time tracking apps to help with that. They create time reports by the end of the month. And hopefully he's going to also share <laughs> some of them in the chat. So if you are interesting, uh, yeah, hopefully Limonas, if you can, please share. Yeah, that would be really cool because I used to have one uh, and it basically worked at the top of my screen um, and it was a free app. Um, and uh, I used to just have to remember to click a button if I started one job. And I think <clears throat> this is really cool for, for freelancers because we often have multiple jobs at the same time. Um, so you can basically put in the data, uh, whatever it is, so holistic trainer and then something for German NA and then something for Salto and <clears throat> different color codes. And then you just click a button and it starts recording the time while you're on that job. You just have to remember to click the button when you're finished. Um, and um, yeah, and it was it was great actually. I'd forgotten about that. Thanks, Limonis. Yeah, I think these are the questions. If you are still interesting in some topic or you have questions on your mind, just share in the chat. Thank you. Yeah, this is, um, I think this is a short bit. Um, we we are not very good at saying no uh, in the youth sector. Um, uh, I know we shouldn't speak in generalizations, but I, I think I can speak for most of us when I say that we, we're not very good at saying no. Um, and, and that brings a lot of difficulties for many of us uh, because it means that we are working um, uh, multiple, multiple jobs at the same time. Um, but um, it is something that we we need to to get better at. Uh, I need to get better at for sure. Um, and and you know you can challenge yourself maybe to think about different different elements of job. Is uh, you know how many other pieces of work am I doing right now, and can I take on another one? Um, will I actually enjoy this piece of work or am I just doing it because uh, my ego thinks it's a good idea? Um, and, you know, who, who are the people you're going to be working with? Does it mean having to build completely new relationships? Uh, is that going to take, you know, a lot more effort to do this, this training course um, because it's a new organization, new colleagues um, and so on. So, you know, it can be worth giving yourself little challenges to say, do I really need this? Do I really want this? Um, <clears throat> I think it's um, important for um, self-care that we we do look after ourselves. Um, training courses take a lot of hours, um, anything up to 14 to 16 hours a day you can be working. Um, the training course might be from 9.30 till 6, for example, but chances are, you started at 8, 8.30 or 9. Um, you finished after everyone's left the room because you're doing preparation. Maybe you have an evening meeting with colleagues um, and you're expected to hang out with participants. 
or not. <laughs> um, so, um, you know, when we're on training courses, I, th I think we need to be aware of, of how much energy they are taking um, and, and how much we need to look after ourselves. <clears throat> how much can uh, other people take care of of evening activities and and uh, find ways of of um, um, getting participants to come to terms with you're not going to hang out with them all the time um, and and which is not easy because uh, they can put a lot of pressure on you I'm I'm just remembering um, uh, with Marco uh, a year and a half ago. Uh, participants were very disappointed when I didn't go to the um, um, intercultural evening. Um, but I was working solo and, and um, you know, um, I had to prepare for the next day. Um, and I was tired. <laughs> so, you know, I finished my preparation and I went to bed um, with a book rather than go down and be sociable. People don't always like it, but I think it's a reality we need to we need to be aware of for ourselves. Um that's also about setting boundaries. Um, I found a really nice, I'm just going to skip to the next. I found this just recently. I'm going to go back again in a moment. But I really like this. Um, receiving this email outside of normal working hours, question mark. Managing work and life responsibilities is unique for everyone. I have sent this email at a time that works for me. Please respond at a time that works for you. I love that. I think it's so cool. Um, and I, I think boundaries are something we're not very, again, we're not very good at um, as, as or not just trainers, but youth sector in general. Um, it's partly because of the nature of youth work. Um, but the reality is that um, most people work an eight hour day uh, in, in, in the rest of the world. Um, and we end up working 10 to 16 hour days. Um, if you send an e if you send emails out at 10 p.m. or messages at 10 p.m., then people will get used to the fact that you're working at 10 p.m. If you send messages on on uh, on a Sunday afternoon or emails at a Sunday afternoon, people get used to the fact that you work on a Sunday afternoon. <clears throat> so if you're actually having some time off and you don't reply. Then you get a shitty response coming back. So, hey, where are you? Why haven't you replied to my urgent email? But it's a Sunday afternoon. Why should you reply to that urgent email? Or why is that urgent email being sent on a Sunday afternoon? Um, why can't it wait till Monday morning? Um, so I, I think the, the, the downside, no, not the downside, the, the difficulty with this is that youth organizations um, do work evenings because that's when young people are available. Um, but I think especially when we work with institutions, I think we should be stricter with our and valuing ourselves. They are working set hours. I know people work much, much more in these institutions in South Coast and national agencies. Many of them work much beyond the hours they actually get paid for. Um, but many of them do start at nine and they'll finish at five or six or whatever it is, the working working day. <clears throat> So why can't we? Why can't we work those hours? Unless you're working with a small organization where the youth workers, you know, because they have a regular job and then they're they're working with the young people in the evening. So they're then of course we need to be flexible. Um <clears throat> but um yeah, I think the more that we send messages in the middle of the night, the more expectation there is that we would we are there. Um, and I and I think we need this is a bad habit that we have in in the sector, and uh, I think we need we need to be working to change it for our own health and welfare, and as another way, as I say, of, of valuing ourselves. Um, I wanted to go back. What else did I want to talk about here? Um, I no, these are. Um, I think really coming. To, also, my voice is coming to the end. Um, Time networking. Uh, we've talked about this a little bit about networking. I think this is um, linking back to what Petra was saying. <clears throat> <coughs> the more we are working together, maybe they're not formal networks. They can be informal networks. We have things like the guild. Um, there is the um, now the Youth Workers Association. No, not not association. What is it called? 
Oh, Olga will kill me. Um, the International Youth Work. There's another association which is for um, youth centres now. Just just started a month ago, two months ago. Um, uh, so there are these networks. There are also uh, networks of of organisations, uh, Youth Express Network, Youth for Exchange and Understanding. <coughs> And so on. There's there's lots of these uh, Iglio and and so on. Um, the more that we network with people and 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 not just these formal networks, but informally network with each other, uh, I think it can help us finding out what what is being charged for certain pieces of work, um, what information we need to make a certain application, um, and so on. So I I think this is. Um, this is this is a really important part of valuing ourselves is is to be connecting connecting with others. I think I'm going to finish it there because the the other points are kind of covered or or not so relevant for the direction that we've gone with this. Yeah. Any other questions or, or points of view? Did, did uh, Limanus find the link? Yes, yes. He was sharing already. Mm, so from the app or websites, you can try desktime.com, uh, which automatically tracks work-related time and non-work-related and reminds to take breaks. So oh, I nice. recommend it. <laughs> uh, and also he shared another one, uh, my, Meister Task. Uh, you can find it in the chat. And also uh, Esther show, uh, shared Toggle and she's saying it's really good. Okay. Oh no, that doesn't work. I'm just trying to find... How do I... Maybe like this. I had two links I said I was going to share, so I'm I'm just trying to um mm. do them now. Yeah, one was Editor Ninja and Smart Blogger, super. Mm -hmm. And also Agnes is sharing tip that these emails they can be solved by scheduling them, which is also feature also Google is offering. So if you don't want to send emails during the night or, yeah late yes yeah 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 brilliant thanks Limanus. thanks esther yes so if you have any question feel free to ask Mm, maybe from my side, Nick, <laughs> is that you said that this project, Holistic Trainer, helps you to also focus on you, on your boundaries, on your um, well-being. And that's the magic that that when you go from um, full agenda to your boundaries and willing to say no, somehow your ag agenda, working agenda, uh, is quite not so full. <laughs> but it means also that your work is not done uh, in with this intensity you are used to. So how you are managing this? Maybe yeah, ba badly. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, um, I I'm 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 seeing a coach, uh, a professions coach at the moment, um, and this was a discussion I had with her last night. It's like uh, my schedule is is much much less, and I have become so inefficient. It's horrible, um, and I think it's just it's just going to need some time to to work out because I'm used to working under constant pressure with so many jobs, so many deadlines constantly on my back that I've I've come to learn how to work under pressure, and now I don't know how to work not under pressure, mm -hmm. um, and it's it's really strange, um, and I don't like it. Uh, I like being efficient. I like getting things done. Um, so I, I think this is just something that's going to take a bit of time to to work out. Is that uh, yeah? 
I've got more time to um, to be looking after myself. So at the moment, for example, I'm finishing work around half past four in the afternoon. Um, I have a, a, a big garden, which um, in Montenegro, everything grows like it's, it's insane, man. Um, so, um, you know, I, I, I try to finish work at between four and five, let's say, because it's flexible. Um, and then I, I change clothes and go into the garden and, and tackle nature um for for a couple of hours <clears throat> and it's and that's wonderful so i'm also trying to put in other things so i'm not trying to make an eight day eight, eight, eight hour day just for the sake of having an eight hour day um I'm, I'm just cutting it short and doing something else but my efficiency uh, i need to work on this i don't know how to deal with this at the moment okay it seems i tackled a very interesting topic <laughs> Yeah, it's it's really fascinating for me. Um, yeah, nice. The end. <laughs>